that you want to be as editor here because of that. I've only been here since January, but I've been in Pittsburgh media for a while. Um, I was at the, uh, let's see, I started at the Washington County Observe Reporter. Uh, I worked at the uh, Trip for three years, uh, a couple years in Pittsburgh Business Times. Um, I was out of the area for a while working in Boston and uh, came back to uh, Pittsburgh because I really missed it a lot um, in January because these very fortunate circumstances aligned themselves. There was an opportunity here for me to post to that and uh, could not be more excited to be here and sort of helping move us toward um, a bit more digital future. So it's been a little bit of a um, not everyone is as on board, let's put it that way. It's sort of a, you know, it takes a little bit of more convincing some people than others, but uh, it's a really exciting time to kind of be part of this shift uh, that the newspapers are all dealing with, whether we like it or not. So I'm really happy to be here. I want to just point out for people, my colleagues in my fair short zone and volume one, uh, two of our top ones, of course, is to come um, I'm not going to introduce people, I want people to introduce themselves because um, Kim and I are friends, and uh, Kim kind of like introduced me to social media, and I, real, I recognized right away that if I didn't get involved, I, in order for me to remain relevant as I was growing older, that I needed to embrace this. Yeah, frustrating friends, though. Yeah. Frustrating friends. Well, yeah, but I mean, I think that she kind of like, I think you kind of like encouraged me to get involved. I think you're my first follower on Twitter, actually. Oh, really? Uh, so, and I, since then, I mean, I, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, I was on Facebook when it was very brand new. And uh, I, I'm on Flickr, and now I'm using Instagram, and Foursquare. Yeah, Scott's a wonderful photographer. His blog is really Yeah, I have a blog. And, but uh, Twitter, by far, is my favorite thing. I really love Twitter. I don't really want to talk to forever. I'm I like Twitter, but all my blog can be so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually tweeting. Um, I'm Bobby Cherry, and I'm a reporter um, at Trip Little Media, the Pittsburgh Trip, and the Super Herald. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm in enemy territory, as, I was, as my friend Sorry. Karen um, you said. Turn off the lasers. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I um, was born and raised in Pittsburgh. Um, I've been working with the Trip for, I guess, almost six years now. And I have been uh, tweeting and doing the social media stuff for work for just as long. Um, and I guess that's the best introduction I'll give and under a minute or so. Well, wait a second, though. We wouldn't know each other if not the Twitter. That's true. I actually, I wouldn't I mean, know. That's kind of a big thing. The people know. I know out here in Hawaii. Well, don't claim you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know any of these people, Holly and some others, because of, of Twitter. So Twitter is how I made friends. <laughs> 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 um, my name is Mila Sanina. I'm the social media editor at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. I'm um, actually, I was born in the glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Um, I do not have any relations to Borat, but I, am, um, I actually did my graduate degree here in Pitt, and um, um, I worked for CNN International in Atlanta and then for PBS NewsHour and uh, a year ago started at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and I love it here. I uh, use social media and encourage our reporters and editors to use it to the best of our ability and strive for the meaningful interactions and news gathering, reporting, distribution of our content. Um, and I'm very, be, I'm very happy to be part of this panel, and I'm grateful to Kim for introducing me to these guys and uh, for bringing me over to this panel. So happy to be here. I'm Scott Harbaugh. I'm a weather guy, so I'm not sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> um, I work at WPXI. I do tweet more than weather, though, which is why I think is part of the reason why I'm here. Uh, the Gateway standoff a couple weeks ago is a perfectly good example. Our reporters were all out in the field. I realized I wasn't going to be doing any more weather the rest of the morning, so I just sat there and tweeted everything that I heard in my ear from the reporters and attached their name to it. But I did fight social media and I fought Twitter when it was first told to me that I should do it four years ago. And now I can honestly say this isn't me, this is our management. I am a Twitter 
God at work. I think is what it is. But it's just at work. I still have a lot to learn, and that's why I'm here today. All right, guys. Well, I like, like Deanna said, we want to try and keep it informal as much as possible. So I was going to. I'm glad you brought up the Gateway um, Center hostage situation. Uh, Mia was at a conference in San Francisco that day, so I was kind of on myself. Yeah, put on the homepage, but that's okay. Um, I was going to show you guys this briefly um, on the screen there. We use this to track traffic on the website. Uh, that's how many people are on ChrisWizette.com right now. Um, you can see kind of this graph here. I'll show you the one day graph which kind of shows you the very predictable audience a lot of the time. Uh, that's the graph of, you know, that uh, high point that in the mountain there is uh, midday between like 11 and 2, so you can see the restaurant was the heaviest traffic. So, um, you know, you try, I try and plan according to those stories that are, you know, we want to give some extra push to or get some extra story to get them on the home page. You know, earlier in the day, that sort of thing. Um, and you know, we're working to sort of make this to drop off less. It's, it's definitely less steep than when I first got here. So we're kind of working on keeping that. You know, we're going to have a drop off at night and weekends, but to try to keep that. Uh, you know, raise that up a little bit on our sort of our um, trickier areas. But if you look at, um, I was just going to show you the 30-day graph, and you can probably tell by looking at it what day was the. Um, Gateway Center process situation. So it's really, um, to that fight for the patient who's having a heart attack. Put a little there, right? Uh, so that um, you know, we hit, we actually hit the top. This is the gas gate on the, on the left there. We hit the top. It was actually stuck all day. We couldn't actually tell how many people were there was so much traffic. Um, and so you, this is a great tool for Mila and for I because. It helps us not only know what people are looking at right now, people are very interested in the Stink Bug story, because it's um, but we can also see, you know, where people are coming from. Sorry, I'm not absolutely looking here. Where people are coming from, what referral sources are coming from. You see that little Facebook icon that's being shared, 13% of the traffic of that is being shared on, on Facebook. So we, we know, you know, we, Mila has a good sense, and I sometimes uh, have a good sense of what, um, you know, what stories we'll, we'll catch on on Facebook and how to, and this one's over a great photo that might be a good place to be. So you're trying to plan the coverage according to what Charpeat is telling us in real time, sort of what we learn from Charpeat as we, as we use it every day. Um, I find it interesting though that uh, the, one of the things people go to next from the Stink Up article is commenting policy. Uh, so they want to know it's what, so what is appropriate to say about Stink Up. That's been a big part of what Neil has done here recently. I believe it was March, right? And when we first started yeah. having uh, articles on the site that we used to comment on. So a whole new world of interaction and engagement and, uh, and uh, ways people can try to get away with cursing uh, on the website. So um, Neil is very much involved in monitoring that and keeping track of that. But it definitely, you know, it, it's uh, at the end of the Steelers game, even during the Steelers game, people will be on and commenting. Um, and left him in so long, and you, you can just see that the discussion builds and builds. Um, and so we're just really looking at ways to be, not just what people are reading, but what people are engaging with, but they're, where do they come next, where are they coming from. You know, if an article, if, if, if I move this article from the page, do I see this type of traffic? If I put a photo of this, where do I? This kind of helps us see what's engaging, maybe what's not as engaging, maybe ways we can tweak things to sort of give them a boost. So I get very hooked on it to stare at the blue graph all day. Um, but the Gateway Center um, shooting was a good example of uh, sort of social media really spreading the word. What did I say? Shooting? Shooting. <laughs> <laughs> the Gateway Center <laughs> incident, possible <laughs> situation, um, was, uh, was a good example of social media. And I was, you know, Scott Harbaugh was all over the place that day. And you know, our reporters were, you know, literally were right there, so um, we didn't have the problem of having people to, you know, maybe come back. We had the luxury of having you know, photographers available to come right over across the street and get the code. Um, so, but it was this is how it played out on social media was kind of weird because the suspect is in this situation with his hostage and is making updates to his Facebook page. We first saw that we said. We looked at the timestamp and thinking, is he, he just updated that just now. It was very, uh, I don't think we had ever encountered anything like that. And so we, all, we, of course, have the impromptu discussion of, 
you know, what should we do with this? Should we put this a link to the Facebook page with our story? Should we, you know, what, what if something happens? And, you know, it, we sort of were really trying to weigh what to do with this very uh, volatile ongoing situation. And I think we ended up putting a link uh, to the Facebook page kind of underneath the main story of what was happening. And we kept a very close eye on you know, what was happening, if anything was getting out of hand or any, you know, going off the rails. But it was a very, very strange situation uh, that we found ourselves in. And then, you know, at one point, um, after people had really discovered that his Facebook page it was shut off. And so, you know, I think they were seeing that he was, a lot of people were trying to get him on television or on online and get their comments sort of know that people had arrived for themselves or being themselves part of this discussion. So it was a very weird situation. I never really covered it in my head, but um, it was one of those days where there were so many pieces happening at once that um, you know, keeping track of all the tweets and keeping track of you know what was going on when and you know who's using what hashtag and you know we're using three gateway right now, we're using hostage prices right now. What is, what is everyone else using and kind of trying to keep track of everything got to be it's very exhilarating, very challenging, very exhilarating uh, to be kind of part of that great community. And I wonder if you guys have, you know, during that the hostage situation, what it was like in your newsrooms um, as you were trying to keep track of what's going on, you know, keep track of, you know, I, I remember when they said that the um, suspect was in custody and the hostage was safe. It was very quick. It was very all of a sudden, you know, we had to shift gears like, very dramatically. But um, before that, it was sort of a lot of waiting and what's going on and who's this guy and, you know, the information was sort of tricked by in, but then once it was done, it was done very fast. Um, so I wonder what, what, in your newsroom, what you guys were, were doing, how you were monitoring things, what, what you found useful during that to sort of keep track of what was, what was going on. I mean, we had the benefit of geography and you know, as a KPA, but I wonder what, what else was going on in other newsrooms as, as you were trying to cover this. Um, this couple was, you said you were here exactly we, a year. We found out. It, to me, social media is a trust issue. People have to trust you and you have to trust them. And I had six people DM me that this guy had a Facebook page. And that's how we found out about it at first. When people were saying, hey, this guy has a Facebook page. So I'd walk into the newsroom and say, are you checking into this guy's Facebook page? Let's look into this. But you have to be careful as to what's legitimate and what's not legitimate. You can't print right. it. You can't go on the air with it and say, hey, so we you know, make sure we confirmed it first, but that was, I think that was the main help for me. And it, the reason why I, I started tweeting was because I realized that at 849, I was no longer doing weather the rest of the day. So to make myself useful, keep the earpiece in, listen to what all the reporters are saying, and then just tweet out on Facebook what the reporters are saying with their names on there so people could, could follow them. We had at one time, fortunately, Post Gazette was on board, Trip was on board. We had Courtney Brennan and her sister Kelly Brennan as two of the top Twitter trends in Pittsburgh at one time. As Kelly said the next day, because we kept sending her name out with every tweet, everything she said, and Kelly A. Brennan says, and we were getting information from people, hey, do you know this guy has a Facebook page? Do you know this guy has social media? And it's a it's a trust issue. And I think that was yeah. the biggest thing that I learned that day was, you know, you everyone is there to help us. Yeah. And that was one thing I didn't realize really before that day was that Everybody can help, and right. it's not just a media thing; it's a yeah. people thing. Right, and I, because I think a lot of people were wondering what's going on downtown. And my husband works downtown. I don't know what's happening, and I felt it was a way for people to get, you know, information really quickly. Um, because a lot of times, you know, publishing the website doesn't give you like how much people can publish it actually goes up. So people really were starring for information. That morning, and I felt like the quicker we could get it, the better. You know, and then when we discovered the Facebook page, it was a little nerve-wracking because you know, what if this guy posts a photo? and predictive and something, you know, that we wouldn't publish. I mean, we really had to be careful about it, but fortunately, you know, it turned out peacefully. But it was very, you know, a lot of sort of tension about should we put this up, should we let people know? And then it became obvious that it wasn't just us that were, we weren't really aware of it, you know, so um, we wanted to be, to inform people this is what, how this was unfolding. They're negotiating with this guy on the Facebook page, you know, so it actually became part of the story that we decided to leave it on, so. Um, and I wonder, Scott, if you guys could have that discussion about what what would be, what if something untoward happened or something violent Well, as happened. you guys know, there's no, there's really no time for discussion half the time. Yeah. It's just, it yeah. just goes. So what we ended up doing, because the police asked, I don't know if everyone's aware of this, but the police asked everybody to take down live stream video. 
because he was watching what was going on yeah. during. So we took down our video about 11.30 in the morning, and I kept getting tweets from people saying, hey, your live stream is down. But nobody conveyed to me why it was down. So I had to then go search to find out why it was down, but we all had to take streaming video down and information down because he was watching it. Um, the Facebook page just got out of hand. People were encouraging him to yeah. shoot the hostage yeah. and to yeah. shoot the police. And fortunately, uh, the police chief came out and said, hey, anyone encouraging this man is going to be possibly held accountable. Right. That's a follow-up story. Have any of us actually done that follow-up story yet as to whether any of those people were brought up on charges? Yeah, let me call the right now. We'll check the next day of how Facebook became part of the story. Whether and it truly did. It yeah. was probably the biggest turning point of the story mm -hmm. for at least a period of an hour until they took the Facebook page yeah, down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we first noticed that he was updating from the scene, we were sort of stunned, you know, that he had the presence of mind to do that. You know, didn't have anything else going on, just updated his Facebook status, you know. So it was definitely a very bizarre day and weird use of social media. But, um, Bobby, what was, were you working that day? Were you involved in the plan I was laying in bed listening to Morning Griffin. And that's wow. what I heard about it. Um, Something wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> um, and I, but, but a friend of mine actually had found the, the Facebook page before it was kind of discussed on the media here in town. Mm -hmm. And so I sent it to, to the trip, and they hesitated at first because nobody knew what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So that was my only real interaction with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was just, I had, I had Scott's Twitter feed going, I had the TV on, and I had the radio on, mm -hmm. just listening to the conflicting, the very conflicting reports. Yeah, because that's, that's a tricky thing, right? Yeah. Because there's so much that right. like is happening, yeah. and is happening, and, you know, social media can sometimes confuse that, even the other sort of the tools that we So I had the luxury of not being that yeah. um, as part of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's too bad. It's, it's really an interesting question. Scott Beverage, you mentioned that you had, in Washington County, you had a an, an event unfold on social media. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the specifics. So, but what was the? I, I'm just, I'm basically I'm just going to say one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The situation was that, um, that since we're in Washington Green County, there really wasn't any way for us to localize the story. So we were right. We were using wire copy, but all of us were certainly glued to our Twitter streams and especially to, to Facebook to try to some of those uh, postings of his were so cryptic we didn't know what he was saying. You know, you know just. Um, we were just as glued to the story as everyone else, yeah. but uh, I, you know, I mean, I could, there's, there's, there are a lot of times though over, over the course of the last couple of years where Twitter and Facebook have been helpful. And I, I just, what I did to, for coming here was I went into our archives and I searched the word Twitter, and I was surprised to find that Twitter had showed up over eight, had over 800 stories in the last two years. It really only went to June, so it really wasn't. Full two years, and uh, it, and Facebook had more, uh, 950. But the conversation on Facebook, or, you know, whatever was being mentioned in the stories on Facebook, was nowhere near as interesting as what was playing out on Twitter. A lot of the stuff on Twitter had to do with um, uh, people um, killing people before their time, Joe Paterno and uh, Gabriel. Yeah, Gifford's. where names start trending and yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. And then I thought it was interesting that I saw that uh, Associated Press is, draw, is pulling quotes out of Twitter, like, if, like um, um, Don Cornelius guy, the, the founder of Soul Train, uh, Magic Johnson had said something on Twitter, and the, the, they pulled that out of the Twitter stream and included it in the obituary. Um, the, the local story that she was mentioning was when there was the manhunt for the alleged killer of Carissa, Carissa Kunko from Baldwin. Chris, what's her name? Carissa Kunko. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that was, that was, the, the homicide happened in Washington County, and um, everybody was on the story, and um, his cousin, who was a, was a local athlete, tweeted that he turned himself in, and, and one of our sports guys follows him because they knew each other. And that's how we ended up breaking the story, that he had turned himself in after this, uh, you know, so I mean, it's, but the stuff that was on Twitter was mostly, or I mean, on Facebook was mostly, uh, Associated Press stories and fundraisers, but I thought it was interesting that um, Southwest Regional Police down in um, the Mont Valley is, is issuing all its news releases on, on Facebook now. Mm -hmm. And that um, the funniest thing was that this Amwell woman took her horse on vacation in North, West, North Carolina, and it got away from her, and she had to come back home. And 
she created, somebody in her family created, or one of the babies in the house sitter created a fine, um, what's the worst's name, a fine Roomba page. And it actually found the worst. She had to check the back down. She was able to the worst. That's all right. You raised a spot, a point that I was, you know, I think we all kind of think about it. It's when, when is it OK to use social media as a source of information? And that's something that I think we're always going to kind of struggle with, because you want credibility for any source you have that you're using to, to base a news story on, to base, you know, reporting on. You know, obviously, you always try to corroborate things. But like, uh, well, for, a good example. Things were so fast that it was hard to get at what was actually happened with the gun. At first, did the guy have the gun? Did he have the bomb? What was he, you know, how many hostages did he have? There was a lot of information that was coming out that was just later not. not but if you say, if you say, I think it's, and I, I surprisingly, since I am a weather person, I actually do have a journalism degree from Ohio University. That was my first fact. a little bit of a New York Times site. It's okay. I, 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 I don't like being a weather guy with like an but it's an intellectual <laughs> panel over here, and I feel like weather. I'm like, oh, let's. Uh, okay, you're not. <laughs> Scott and Hilo. Uh, you can't do it. I think you still have to cooperate with everything. You still have to. You still have to source everything. And, and the stuff we were getting on Twitter, the way we chose to handle it was um, we were interviewing people that were coming out of the building at the time for the gateway hostage situation. And we said, so and so said. So and so claim. So you're at least attributing it to someone, so you're not just making a blanket statement. Yeah. I still think the journalism rules apply to social media. You just have to make sure that you're, you know, because it's so easy in 140 characters on Twitter to cut out so and so said, and then it just becomes a blanket statement. And I think we saw a lot of that last year with Jerry Sandusky stuff, where people weren't yeah. cooperating statements. It was just so and so. Jerry Sandusky did this, Jerry Sandusky did that, it became fact instead of becoming conjecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a problem. I think yeah. it's a problem we have to work with every day. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think, you know, talking about the journalism rules still really have to apply, you know, a lot of journalists, you know, create, when they make their Twitter accounts, they put something to the fact, you know, retweets are not endorsement. So, you know, I almost feel like that, you have to keep reminding people that, but I don't know how you guys feel about it when you retweet something. Um, I tend to stick to sort of, hey, this is interesting. Hey, this is, you know, look at this cool graphic. You know, because frankly, it's not for me to talk an opinion on things. This is part of my job. But, you know, when I'm home on my, my personal Twitter account, you know, I'll, I'll drop. But, you know, when you retweet something, do you think about that before, you know, if you're using your professional Twitter? You know, how do you handle that? I mean, how do you, do you have sort of guidelines that you follow or do you just try to, I think generally common sense is sort of like the rule. But, you have a little bit of a different standard um, as far as delivering information for journalists. So, what are your thoughts, kind of, on journalists and uh, journalists who retweet things, and journalists who, you know, use Twitter for, for that kind of you know, information gathering? Go ahead, Bob. You're smirking. Yeah, <laughs> I can't right, wait yeah, to hear this. Not listening, <laughs> actually tweeting something, but that's okay. I was trying to tweet, but I didn't know. Yeah. Um, one of one of my personal pet peeves with journalists who have Twitter accounts is when it says. Um, you know, this is a personal account, but it's public, and they don't, the tweets don't reference the company they work for. As a journalist, anything I do reflects back on the company I work for, and so I always keep that in mind when I'm, when I'm out there in the public. You know, I know some of you people, you folks out here, and you guys, some of you know me as a, a reporter, and so I don't want to do anything publicly that would jeopardize that you know, your thought of that. So that's the one thing that, that, that bothers me. Um, in terms of retweeting things, I mean, fast judgment. I mean, I'm a reporter. I'm going to retweet something that's news. Um, if I see somebody else, you know, tweet something, I'm going to make sure it's something that, that my, that the people following me want to know about. Um, like Kim said, opinions, no way. Um, I'm not going to say, hey, this is cool. You know, you want to check this out. Um, I, or I like this or whatever, you know. Even on down to like, I, I get, I've had on our on our some of the Herald Facebook page, um, we've had people that keep fighting and ask for opinions on something that that we're talking about, and we just sort of stay away from from that. It, it, it's we look at any type of social media outlet that that's attributed to myself or the paper as as an extension of what we do, and it's I'm still a reporter in in, in those outlets. Well, when you're laying in bed, that's the Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I mean, even that morning, I was tweeting from one of my accounts and just retweeting Scott and retweeting some of the Trib and 11, Channel 11 people. Um, but I, well, <laughs> um, and I, I, I'm loyal to my company and my news partners. So, <laughs> um, but I was making sure that I wasn't offering, you know, my thoughts on the situation because that wasn't my place to do that as a reporter. My place as a reporter was to bring the news to the people. It's their place to make the opinion. But if you guys notice, it doesn't matter if you bring your opinion or not. People think you're bringing your opinion. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the thing, when I well, say yeah. a peaceful resolution to the hostage situation, all I said was the hostage and the hostage taker are both safe. And I had about 12 people say, you give a shit about the hostage taker? <laughs> like, I'm just reporting a fact. He's right. safe. He's right. not, he wasn't shot because... The wonderful uh, hostage taker. What about the yeah. scanner that we you guys heard on the scanner, but we heard on our scanner that they had him in sight. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were ready to shoot yep. him if necessary. That was scary. So that's where my mindset was, because I'm hearing that come out of the newsroom. And I'm thinking, okay, they're ready to shoot him if they have to. And then all of a sudden there was a peaceful resolution. So as you said, there was a peaceful resolution. You cannot make anybody happy. No, you can't. No, you can't. And the thing is, you, sometimes you get, if you start into a back and forth with someone, even if it's someone who's asking what seems like kind of an innocuous question, you really have to think, okay, I, I have to be careful because I'm representing what I work for, but I also want to answer, if someone has a question, yeah, I, want but to, I want to it's fun. interact. Yeah. Ask, ask Bobby. I'll yeah. go back and forth with Bobby all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's just fun. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. I, I try not to like it. I tend, to be, I, I tend to be a snarky human being. Well, it's, it's hard to be provocative on social media. Yeah. You know, among the companies, uh, there are different philosophies on how do you handle and how do you approach uh, social media. You know, you have Associated Press guidelines which are very stringent in who you should follow, who you should befriend, who you should like on Facebook. Of course, there is an understanding among everybody who is using Facebook that if you like me, Romney or Barack Obama that you are not actually, you know, endorsing him, um, him as a person because that's just limitations of the platform. Um, and I will like Mitt Romney and Barack Obama because I'm following them as politicians, as a person, as a journalist. Um, there are also guidelines such as New York Times that says, you know, just don't do stupid things and don't tweet or share something you would want your mother to see. So, the, you know, this is kind of use your best journalistic judgment. Um, and I think that the, when you have been using a platform, be it Facebook or Twitter, and you understand the rules of engagement, you know the precautions that will, uh, uh, of your misbehavior, so to speak, your community will police you sort of thing. You know, you will, you get, you have a privilege and at the same time a threat of media feedback. Um, and but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You guys feel like you screwed up. up. You know that yeah. you screwed up, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very quick. Um, Don't make any typos on social media. Oh, but 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 it guarantees a lot of comments. <laughs> In the spring, one of our multimedia folks at the Trib had mistaken some pirates player's name for something, and it turned into a hashtag that Mike and Bob at Kiss at that just went off with for like two days. Trade reports. Yeah. Watch that. Like, oh, that's not me. Oh, I'm we, sorry, that's not me. I was not, like, the next thing I wanted to do was cry after seeing everything. I, I texted Mike and Bob and said, please stop. <laughs> but I mean, you're right. I mean, if you hit that publish button, that tweet button, and it's out there, and people are retweeting that mistake, and they're laughing at it for at least an hour until Twitter finds something new to you. Before that, like, we got the we got the AP style guidelines too. Like AP does issue like who you should follow if you're in the media, who you shouldn't. But my problem with the AP guidelines was, okay, and if the gateway hostage situation is a perfectly good example. If I don't follow everybody who follows me, then you can't DM me. Right. So how am I supposed to get tips on things? So my policy has been for the last two years, if you are an individual who follows me, I will follow you back. I mean, my Twitter stream is full of junk. I mean. So and so was naked while brushing her teeth this morning. Fantastic. <laughs> but it's useless stuff. But at least like I can I can DM with people, I can talk to people. I don't follow businesses because I'm technically not news. I don't follow politicians because I they're politicians, they're all the same anyway, no matter what the political party is. But it's 
it's it's a it's a it's a fine line to walk because you don't necessarily know who you should follow and who you shouldn't follow, and everybody has their own policy. I mean, there are several faces in here I recognize of people I follow, and even though I don't talk to them on a daily basis, the stream's up, and if you say something that catches my attention, I'll tweet back. Plus, I love it because if someone makes a comment about the weather. I can make a comment back to them because it's on the stream. Even if they weren't directing it at me, I can still make a smart out comment back. <laughs> because it's what I do. So I you admit. use Twitter to facilitate your sarcasm, is what you're saying. I use life to facilitate my <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, it is, I think, you know, it, it, it is social media. And I think as journalists, we have to do more than just report what's going on. We have to be social with, pe with people. And I think, I mean, look, let's face it. I'm the number four guy at our station as far as weather's concerned. Stephen Cropper's our chief, Kevin Bess is our morning, Michael Point's our weekend. I got the noon show on PXI and PCNC, which most people don't even know what PCNC is. So social media and the interaction is what I try to do to talk to people. And you know, it's, it's a it's a it's a tool that is going to far surpass TV eventually. And in some ways it already is. The Gateway Hostage situation, the Western Psych shooting, another good example. People were more in tune to social media that day yep. than they were to TV, radio, or newspaper. Yeah. And Plain and simple. When we do this panel of cloud company, can we make sure that Scott Carbone gets top billing? Because I want him to feel like. The yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm also. I'm also really, yeah, I'm also really self-deprecating here. Okay, too. Good. I, right. I'm also I'm talking about how old I am on a daily basis, okay. too. So, all right. Okay, it's, good. It's, it's just a joke. Have a complex. Of, no, I don't know. But it actually, you actually kind of brought up another point that you know I wanted to touch on was the idea that it, it's social media, and I think I'm glad I started and I wish I had it with my fingertips right now. But uh, you know, looking at what journalists retweet and what they share on Twitter and what they post, and most journalists are posting the majority of the time content from themselves or their own publication. They're not good at sharing other people's or drawing people's other. Because they're looking at it as a lot of them as a vehicle to promote their own home, to promote their own site, which that's you know obviously your number one priority is trying to get your information out there to people. But you know that I think that really struck me as you know it's 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 social. It's not just about what the PT is reporting or what you know local media is reporting or what. You know, I want to promote that stuff because I'm proud of it and we do good work here. But I also think you have to acknowledge it. You look at other stuff besides your website. You, you know, read other content. You're interested in other things besides just what your site is doing. So, I think you know that struck home with me that you know to, to really be part of good social media citizen, you have to you know be social. You have to share other things and share what other sites are doing or what what's going on in journalism. What's going on in you know, Do so you guys follow each other? Does the true follow PG and the PG follow the true? Yeah, I was just going to ask you. I mean, playing devil's advocate. I don't have social media. Would you feel comfortable <laughs> retweeting? Or would you feel comfortable? Well, Trip. Um, from my personal account, I wouldn't retweet, you know, from Pittsburgh Post Gazette. That's the that's, that's best. Really that oh, getting information from. Oh, getting information off the post. Information. So, like, yeah. I, like, I follow some people at the other stations, like only people I follow are personal friends. Like, I don't follow them because I don't want to get involved with them. Like, I don't follow everybody at the yeah. other station. Like, I follow people that I like. Yeah. Like, I follow Jeff Cooper. I follow Jeff Cooper. Yeah. I don't follow everybody at the other stations because I don't want that to be our source for anything. So, I wonder right. if you guys. Follow each other. On my on our Simply Herald account, um, I have a, a locked, a private um, list that's called Pittsburgh Media, and it's all of the other media sources. But it's but nobody publicly can see that list because I don't want anyone to assume that I support or do anything with the other media outlets. Oh, people are stopping. <laughs> More or less. Um, privately, yeah, I follow them. But but in terms of professionally, as a as a trip reporter, no, I don't. I don't follow them. Um, yeah, see, yeah. I, I feel like I follow the trip because, I mean, you know, a lot of people get, they get yeah. the print edition and they want to know what they're publishing. That's right. Well, you guys follow, you guys have personal and work accounts. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I just started. So, you? I just have one. I, yeah, I just had the work account too, but the reason is exactly what you said earlier. If I am my, if I were, I started a personal account, mm -hmm. I did it for like two days and then shut it down because I feel like well, spam. Huh? It was spam. It was spam for one. But I stopped doing anything with it. But I feel like it, even if I put anything on my personal account, it still reflects my job in the station. So mm -hmm. I just completely crushed the personal account. Yeah, and account I had my personal account. account for a long time before I went to PG. So you know, I didn't have a PG account, official account, until recently. And I, because I felt like, you know, obviously, on my personal account, I still, 
people know where I work. Not everyone, but most people know where I work. And so I, I try to be, you know, just social, just friendly. And, you know, maybe I swear a little bit more on that one than on my professional one. But, you know, I'm not endorsing candidates and I'm not, you know, I think for the most part, I, I sort of have that, having been a journalist for a, a while now, um, I have that sense of that you have a little bit of a higher standard that you have to, you know, hold yourself to. And you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about religion because, you know, unless you're among family and, and you know, you're not in public. Still huh? Still you still don't know you're not in my family. So, but you, you always have, there's always been that kind of standard for journalists. You have to be a little. I'm not sure I agree with that. Because I think we all have jobs, and if, and if you tweet something on there that your company isn't going to like, you can get fired. So, I mean, you have to really, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be careful how you're presenting yourself on social media in order so that you don't. I mean, you know, if you're selling something, for a living, and you're tweeting, uh, you love Romney, but there may be a Democrat might like, get upset and not buy from you. you know, and there isn't really any science to prove any of this stuff. No, no, it's, no. it's basically you have to have a strategy. You have to find what works for you. I, uh, I don't, I don't get involved in politics or religion, and I hardly do any retweeting. And I know a lot of journalists who are new to Twitter who did retweet that uh, Joe Paterno died. You know. Well, mm -hmm. that's true, and that's the thing. And no matter what you put on there, yeah, that, you yeah. know, retweets are not endorsements. Yeah. They will still still be, yeah. you know, will, you will still be held accountable for yeah. that retweet. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if you didn't tweet, oh, Joe Paterno died from that onboard state, it's still if you tweeted, rest in peace, Joe Paterno, it sort of means that you reported mm -hmm. that he's dead. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think that it's it's very. A tricky situation when we even say that you know our uh, tweets are not endorsements. They're still treated treated uh, treated as ones. And uh, when you are sharing content and it says that you retweeted that, no matter who is the uh, person you retweeted it from, you know you still used your judgment in pressing twice this button. You know, sort of uh, that gives you a choice of retweet. So I think that, um, especially with those situations, um, when you know, when you think about media, CBS Sports reporting um, mistakenly that Joe Paterno was dead, or even CNN, you know, tweeting about the uh, Affordable Care Act ruling, which was sort of, you know, it catches your breath because you go like, oh my God, this is such a momentous ruling, we've got to report fast, but at the same time you see Reuters reporting one thing, CNN another thing, and you don't know who to go with, and you, and you understand that it's very fast. But then you question yourself, what is, is it that important to be fast? Do people remember that you were the first one to report the story? Because in, two, in one minute everybody's going to have the final ruling, and it's probably better to be you know, to be right than being yeah. fast, unless you can do both, sort of, right. you know. But I think we go with the rebellions. Right. <laughs> we talked about right. this a lot, that if people remember if you're first and wrong. Yeah. Otherwise, it, exactly. if you're first and you're wrong, you know, why did you pull yeah. the trigger? Why did you? CNN reported that Gabrielle Giffords was dead. Was dead, yeah. yeah. And her husband heard the news with his daughters on the airplane yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, heard a lot of people. Exactly. Like, out there. Election day will be interesting because this truly is the first presidential election that is full scale social media. We had social media obviously in 2008, but mm -hmm. this is going to be the first one where news organizations it's are going to be tweeting. Yes, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be an interesting November 6th. So we've talked a lot. I feel like we should probably open up for questions. Yeah. So we're all done. With well, this is hand raising. So. Scott, you brought up a couple points about how. Twitter might eventually you know, overtake TV. You also talk about the presidential election. I thought it was interesting with the, uh, with the uh, convention speeches. A lot of these news organizations, organizations were actually fact checking as at live. And, and, and they I, should be. And, and I think so I, I expect to see that tonight as well. Yeah, with the during the debate. I mean, we're living in a day and age right now where you have to absolutely make sure your facts are straight or you're going to get called out. And, you know, a lot of people still have. We have people in our building that still don't believe that social media is, well, they say it's not, it's not necessarily the future. Oh, it's now. I mean, we have research that shows that our website will probably make more money than our newscast by the year 2020. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's the way that it's going. So 
you can't say anything anymore without it being cooperative. I mean, I posted yesterday on my Facebook page, I posted a fall forecast for October and early November. The first thing I'm thinking is, okay, I'm on vacation the next five days. I might need to pull this down by Monday. Because there is the outside chance, the outside chance that we get some snow flurries Sunday night. Oh my gosh. And outside, Bobby, relax. Right. And, you know, the fact that, you know, in the fall forecast, they say we probably wouldn't see the first snowflakes until after October 10th. And, and Sunday is the seventh. Bobby like, tweeting right now. Yes, you're going to be that too. Uh, rip that phone out of your hands. <laughs> you know, but like it's, it's, it's everything. And that, that, that's my world, is making sure that whatever I say, you know, I, I'm like, okay, so Sunday, you know, I'm going to be in Chicago Sunday. I might need to pull that off my Facebook page Sunday. And the politicians are even worse. Everything they say tonight is going to be under scrutiny, not just by the fact checkers, but by everybody in the Sunday. This is the only problem I have with social media. It is instant complaining. No matter what is said, no matter how it is said. I'd say it's a plus. <laughs> yeah, of course. See, I, I don't like that, like, because because sometimes the complaining is not fact-based. It's just complaining. Well, that's true. It's an immediate reaction. But it, but sometimes you watch CNN, they're doing live coverage of a Republican National Convention, a Democratic National Convention, and you realize that these people are not qualified to give you analysis, and you're waiting for this Associated Press you know, fact check, checking. What I think is contributing, uh, social media platforms and social media voices are contributing to the conversation is an immediate reaction to, oh, you know, I'm going to pull this information in, oh, I remember you said that, or oh, I remember you said that, you know, and it's really very reactionary. I love that if it is fact based, but if some Joe Schmo who has 25,000 followers says, well, no, that fact is not correct. His facts aren't correct. I, mean, I, I think it needs you to be a fact check back. The fact check back. That's, yeah. that's true. You're absolutely yeah. right. Okay. You know, Mila just came back from San Francisco from the Online News Association conference, and she posted a link to one. Uh, uh, was it a keynote speaker? She was an expert on so whatever she was. I'm not exactly sure. But she gave the top 10 trends, and the number one trend is was that readers are becoming less less trustful of what they're reading from the media. Yeah. Uh, her name is Amy Webb. Uh, she did probably the best um, presentation at Online News uh, Association Conference, and she talked about top 10 uh, tech trends. Uh, she appeared on the stage with a purse that charges her phone, and it was sort of, you know, she kind of uh, was blew everybody's mind. And uh, she was talking about how, you know, transformative technologies such as Google Glasses and all these purses that charge your phone and uh, the identifying technology is going to transform journalism and help and be collaborative tools for people on the ground who are, who are covering breaking news. You know, it, to the extent that the glasses that you're wearing are going to screen and identify people that you need. You know, sort of saying that, oh, this is a person, her name is so-and-so, she's so-and-so, she works for that and that. And it, it sort of was interesting and grew. Well, I, I thought the other thing that was interesting that she said was that they're, uh, either they either have an app or they're coming out for an app where you're going to be able to vet your hometown newspaper's accuracy by running that through. Me? Yeah, and I know Mike brought up, we were talking about it last week or two weeks ago, that, you know, how do you know that they're, that the better is yeah, it's, it's it, accurate. Yeah. But I mean, I would imagine they would look to see what kind of stuff you're putting out there on Twitter and Facebook and see what's the frequency of it being accurate information. I don't know. But, you know, hopefully nobody's actually going to be the accuracy in my forecast. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have questions? Because I feel like you know, I don't want to just talk at you. If you guys have questions about anything you said or anything as far as social media and the news, you know, I, I'd love to hear them. Um, seems like that. yes. I'm oh, sorry. What's your name? Ellie. Oh, um, do you guys see kind of with like you know, the 146 characters are kind of limited in how you can say things? Do you guys, I saw a while ago modified, oh, empty, like the modified tweets kind of happening here and there, a little bit to the retweet. Do you guys see other things kind of that are maybe you think should be happening or are going to be happening just because of, you know, trying to get news in and trying to explain everything, and, but, you know, not, you know, either exactly retweeting or modifying happening? I just think the grammar incorrect. 
much. It's a TV thing, Bob. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, it, what I do is I, I like, I... <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you glad that I like jump on you before you can get to the... I know. Like, um, <laughs> the, um, like, I type out what I want to say, like, for the gateway hostage situation. I typed out exactly what I wanted to say, that if it said minus 12 characters, I cut out little prepositions that probably shouldn't have been cut out, but it got the point across. And the best example was the other day, I'm not going to say who it was, but there was a producer from a competing TV station that tweeted out my information on the tornado that hit in 84 the other day because I did it in one tweet and her meteorologist did it in three tweets. So she retweeted what I put and I said, are you allowed to do that? And she's like, we'll find out if I get in trouble later. <laughs> so, I mean, it, you know, I don't think social media needs to be grammatically perfect. I could be wrong. Oh, from the TV. I know. I'm from the TV side. I understand that. What was response to that? <laughs> well, I saw Kim's face. <laughs> I think it is a challenge, definitely. But I think as far as you know, trying as far as, 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 as Twitter, I know for a while, everyone had their own URL. Show. Everyone had, and then Twitter said, "No, nah, we don't really need that anymore. Uh, we'll take care of that, that URL for you." So that was you know, everyone's trying to brand themselves and make themselves part of the platform. And you know, there's only so much you can do because at the end of the day, this is a free platform that you're just one part of. You, you only own what you put into it. You, you only get out of it what you're, what you're putting forth. And if you're not, you know, you, you can only take credit for so much. You can only own so much. If you're part of a community, you're part of a, a larger you know, group. I think for journalists, having to cede that control is, you know, really tricky sometimes. You know, it doesn't come naturally enough. So to, do, to recognize that you're only one, you know, very small voice in this giant, you know, chasm of voices. I think the 140 characters is the beauty of Twitter because it really challenges you to, to, to write something very, sh very short yeah. and creatively. And I think that's what makes it more interesting because, especially if you follow a lot of writers, I mean, there's a lot of really funny stuff in there. And I mean, you know, so I think that rather than you know on Facebook, people just can just dump in this. It's just. Mm -hmm. But you know, actually, uh, to, to, to get to your point, Twitter is uh, looking into different curation um, mechanisms that they could use. And in fact, at the Online News Association Conference, uh, Dick Costello spoke, um, CEO of Twitter, and he said that we are looking into ways we could curate, help people to curate content. And if there was a tweet that says, you know, vote uh, for your favorite team, Within that tweet, there would be a ballot box where you could check it. So there would be much more context to Twitter in, in the future. It will stay as 140 characters, but they will try to surface and bring the um, kind of all the facets of information in one place. So there will be more multitasking happening on that platform. Oh, Are all of you familiar with the Boy Forum? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's been the subject of some nasty. I, I'm just I'm scared to get on there, but yeah. I did see one criticism maybe six or eight months ago. So some people were on there and they said that our breaking news and crime reporters should be really careful about what they tweet. If it's something going on in their social life, have some margaritas or something. That's right. Yeah. And, and Eric and I actually, I wish you were here, but we talked about this, just how we think that it sort of humanizes reporters in a way to occasionally say, like, I got this great deal today or something. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it would pop up in our PG news or tweet box, but is that really a bad thing? It sort of deviates a little bit from just the facts. Yeah, no, I think you have to have a personality. Right? Can you explain what that site is to those who might not know? Um, is it just like a bashing place? It's like a... It's yes. Like a, it's yes. It's like a yes. 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 Yeah, okay. I yes. don't know much about that. I don't get on there. Some who still are. So it, it's yeah, we go on to the side of each other. I was pretty excited to put them on there for cool. stories yeah, I read or whatever. So still, um, still yeah, that's what I think. Then it's, it's, it's you know that sort of anonymous, faceless um, you know, stuff that you can't develop that seriously. But I think you know I think you're right, Molly. That you, it's it is that fine line. You want to have a personality, and you know I'm a Pirates fan. And I was sort of rooting throughout, and every news meeting we had, I was the only one. From. But toward the end of the season, it was looking grim, and I kept saying, you know what, we're going to pull it off, we can do it, and I kept saying it. Um, but, you know, I, I think you should be able to say on your work Facebook, hey, okay, you know, I'm in the pocket, I'm lost, the pitching is terrible, and that doesn't necessarily make you a bad journalist, you know, I don't think. 
you know, I think you have to have some personality. You know, I, I was there, I had lunch today, you know, with you, and I'll get out to talk to everyone at Dorset's restaurant, but you know, so. But that's, you know, you really should use your best judgment. Right. I understand that, you know, social media is a place where you are a person, you know, and you have to show, you sort of, it makes your uh, account and your feed special in a way that you could personalize it. But at the same time, you also should use your best judgment in what you tweet. Probably a tweet about, you know, seven margaritas in one night, and you know, like... That would not be a tweet mild. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying an extreme, you know, that, yeah, maybe it, it uh, sort of shows you uh, your personality, but I would probably stay away from it. Uh, and I think that it would be prudent. We were told to tweet about our jobs, like tweet like for me it's weather, but also pick one or two things that accentuates our personality. For me it's the Pittsburgh Pirates and it's Christmas. So I tweet about <laughs> two opposite spectrum. So I tweet about the Pirates all summer. I am a huge Pirates fan. I was at the game last night, I was at the game today. Uh, and now the baseball season is over and we start seeing Christmas tweets pop up in my <laughs> But they want us to show that we're more than just our job. But as Mila said Seven margaritas. No, I had probably six beers at the ball game today, but I'm not tweeting about it. Oh, I like that. And you are. Yeah, so is Bobby. Everyone else in the room is going to. No, but I agree with me on the whole part. You gotta, you gotta be responsible about it. But you do definitely want to show who you are. Right. I love talking about the Pirates. I will dig up stats on the Pirates during the season and tweet them. And actually, sometimes those things get retweeted more than the weather stuff gets retweeted. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. You definitely get a, it. Well, I'm, I'll say it one last time. I'll beat the quick beat the dead horse. But it is social media. You're supposed to be social, and not just be using information. Well, I, I'm, I'm 56 years old, and I like to make fun of myself for being old. And I tweet about old man candy or put something on Facebook with like like Neckos or something. Neckos. It's more comments and more retweets and more than if I would tweet something about something. Sure. Story. <laughs> well, you know, there are, there are three kind of rules for any type of use of social media. It's like, be strategic, be special, and personality is something that allows you to be special. And the third is just strive for meaningful interactions. You know, even if it's a kind of silly post that allows you to engage with the public, maybe that's exactly, what, you know, that's, that's something that brings people together. Like, with, uh, I, I can, I will bring one example that uh, really um, makes, actually revived my belief in social media because I read a lot of comments on our website every day and we get probably maybe 1,400 every day. Well, in extreme, like yesterday we got 1,400. Um, and when you read through a lot of, of these comments, you just really get overwhelmed. And um, I, at some point, I said, you know, it's just too much. It's too much feedback. It's just very hard to make sense of, of, of all of that. But there, there is this project that we're doing, a social media project, which is called The Digs. And we're digitizing uh, all archival photo from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette archive and posting them on Facebook and Twitter and on Tumblr, too. So every day I post a, an old picture of Pittsburgh. You know, it's a, it's a World Series game or it's a building that uh, doesn't exist anymore. And it brings people together in a way that I have, I have never thought that it could bring, uh, you know, especially with a political campaign going on, people fighting on the threads and you know, arguing about the threads. But this post, they bring so much feedback and give such a, an invaluable insight about the community there was this um, photo of Kennedy, you know, uh, going down the penway, and he's waving to the crowds. And I posted that photo, and people started commenting. One person said, oh, I recognize a policeman. This is my dad. Other person said, oh, I wish I was there, because my mom dragged me to the dancing, uh, you know, to the dancing lesson. And then, you know, it kind of grew this thread through, and it was just a very insightful and very inspiring. And if you haven't checked it out, you should. It's really a good online um, addition to the paper. But I, I, 
I'm just, you know, it, these are things that really make it special. We try to make it strategic, and we, we are striving for meaningful interactions to engage with the community. And meaningful interaction doesn't always have to be like the, the main the main crux of the day. Like yesterday, the, the Weather Channel announced they were going to start naming winter storms. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> Scott loves it. I hate it. I made it clear that I hated it. And last night, I tweeted a picture of a cloud. I said, "This is a cloud." I made it clear. <laughs> <laughs> and I, got, I got 30 retweets in 15 minutes because people already knew throughout the course of the day that I thought oh. this was the dumbest idea to face the earth. <laughs> So, I mean, I, but, I mean, it was actually a club with a goldfish cracker, actually, which is why I took it in the first place. But, you know, I mean, it, you know, it got the point across to my message yeah. for the day, but it was silly and people ate it up, and yeah. that's part of what it's about, meaningful interaction. I still think it's the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, the, the old photos are by far to, to draw the most traffic on. Especially Pittsburgh. I mean, could you pick a better city to do that? No, no, no. That's that's we definitely by far the stuff. Yeah. It's very that's what we've been on our Facebook timelines. We started using the timeline to import all the pages of the Herald, um, and those get a lot of comments yeah. and a lot of like, oh, you know, I remember you know this happened or that building being there. So, exactly. And next year we turn 110, so we're trying to do this almost daily like you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. So we've been compiling all of that stuff to start for next year. You turn 110. So, I do. I physically don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's on seven, so just to wrap up, if you guys could all say what you're most looking forward to for PodCamp this year, to end um, on a positive note, I think we'd be curious to hear what you're looking to get out of it. I just want to meet more people and get a sense of what we can do, I can do, um, to be more help them be more useful, be, be able to connect you know, what we're doing, what they're doing, and so get, you know, get ideas, and get you know, feedback, and input, like what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. PodCamp really, I mean, has a really uh, great way of re-energizing me, because, you know, you kind of get burned out after a while, but every year I go to that, and I just come out of their fit, and I'm all psyched about it. So there really is, yeah, I, there are, the sessions are all good, I've enjoyed everything. Should have talked about the hashtags tonight. Save it for PodCamp. Tune in, it kind of PodCamp, and then maybe you'll, <laughs> you'll get a scoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that it has something for the more advanced. Like, I, I think it tends to. Well, Scott will be there. I'm not advanced. That's actually why I'm going. Go ahead. A lot of it seems to be about the new newbies and you know things that help people get started. I think there needs to be something in there for people. Um, I really want to meet people in person. Um, social media is, is social digitally, but I, I mean, the people, I mean, I randomly ran into Holly at Market Square two weeks ago. Yeah. And I see her maybe once a year in person, but I see her between a lot. So it's, it's that whole, you know, meeting people that I follow in this little thing. I want to meet them and see who they are. And, and you know, get to know them in person. That's that's my what I'm looking forward to. Um, my first plot camp was last year, um, and I'm still looking for meaningful interactions, <laughs> <laughs> but in real life, not in virtual. You know, and uh, really, oh my God. what was that? Was a lot. Oh, it was Mesh.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm no, I wasn't even sure. The <laughs> I was sure what you meant by that. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I want to learn. I'm 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 socially a beginner as far as social media goes. I really am. I mean, I tweet a lot, but that doesn't mean it's like always always lost some home from running. Thanks, Amanda, for coming.